Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is the King and Candy Show. Oh, man, you're wondering what you're watching here. This is your man, Kanye West. And we are about to unpack oh, this Balenciaga. What is this, Kanye Candy? It's a Balenciaga show that Kanye West did with Bella Hadid. Bill Adid and the producer of this show is an outstanding artist. Um, his name is Santiago Sierra. Santiago Sierra works to address topics such as social inequality, poverty, racism, and capitalism. So he's basically like your, you know, uh, capitalist worst nightmare <laughs> because he has enough money to produce, physically produce these artworks and show you exactly where the world is going. One of the things why we chose to do this specific topic, because in California right now, there's a lot of floods, there's a lot of muds, and there's a lot going on, man. It's almost kind of like prophetic right. by this uh, fashion show that they did for Balenciaga, where all of these people are are walking yeah. in mud, yeah. you know, and Kanye West has are selling these work boots kind of thing. Yeah, like big rain mud boots. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so funny that you mentioned that Santiago Sierra's um, kind of a political activist uses his art. This was this show is actually living art, I think. And um, when asked about it, he said that it represented the rise of inequality, the return of fascism, and the very real threat of nuclear war. So he wanted to lay out the show in a post-apocalyptic way. So this is literally him saying, after the end of the world, this is what he thinks everything is going to look after an extinction level event. Yeah, and as you can see, like a lot of the men that are in this um, film, they they have androgynous looks, like they're androgynous, like you can't tell if they're female or male kind of thing. Um, Again, this is a hot topic that's going on in the Western world. Uh, Gender, so to say, is there one gender or genders blended? Are there, is there going to be another third gender added to the male and female kind of thing? Um, So, you know, he's outlining it most definitely in the visuals uh, that you most definitely see as he has, you know, this grown man walking with some kind of like Chucky doll. He has pink on, he has mini shorts, you know, th- 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 that kind of thing. What do you think, Candy? Yeah, I definitely think he's trying to make a statement uh, about society and where it's headed and where it's been headed for the last five or so years about where everything is everything else, right? You can identify as whatever you want. You can be an adult that wears like um, a teddy bear backpack and a lime yellow jumpsuit that's like thigh high, right? And you can be like a 30-year-old man doing that. So it's definitely kind of a social political statement, I think. No doubt. And Santiago Sierra, man, he's much known for a lot of his work. But I can we start to draw out at least 10 of his works that is real known. Okay, in the shoot, he did this one work. Uh, it's called the 160 centimeter tattooed line on uh, four people. Santiago Sierra paid four sex workers um, that were addicted to heroin. Can you finish off candy real quick? Oh my goodness. They were addicted to heroin to have a straight line tattooed on their backs. He filmed the act resulting in a 63 minute long video that shows the process in black and white. The women were paid the right amount of money to be able to buy a shot of heroin during that time, which was about 12,000 pesetas or $67. According to a text accompanying the video, the participating sex workers usually charge 2,000 to 3,000 pesetas between 15 and $17 for fellatio this means they would have performed sexual acts around four times for the same amount of money that sierra paid them that's really crazy yo he this dude the santiago sierra the producer of this um of this uh fabulous fashion show for blissiaga he's really pushing the edge man and um all of his edge pushing as you can most definitely see i'm, I'm i wish i would have saw the line tattoo thing oh that he had gosh. did yeah man so as you can see even the guys that are dressed up he you know these are all artistic expressions my people so whenever you see things like this and what's going on in here this is what's going on what do you think Ken? 
Yeah, I agree. Backstage, he called the show a companion piece to his show last season because it had snow in it. So he said this season, the snow has melted and turned into mud. So it's almost like um, the continuation of a previous show. Um, and then he said that the mud was dug out like bomb craters. You know how when a bomb falls into the earth or yeah. an asteroid falls into earth, yep. it's a crater? He said that was his homage to the real threat of nuclear war and what it would look like if a bomb hit the earth and created a huge crater into the mud. And the mud was not just mud. It was actually um, manure. It was mixed in with manure. So the whole time, everyone, including the models, smelled the raw odor of decomposition position just even unpacking that that odor of decomposition is probably the smell of bodies being burned right. up and then and then people walking over their bodies and all over the sludge that 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 they're walking on as yeah. they look nice in their right. new balenciagas right it was it was most definitely a, a, a revolutionary response to what's going on socially, how people are kind of like blind on Instagram. They're blind on all of these different social medias and uh, they're just walking through as you see dead bodies and, right. and, and poop everywhere right. and shit everywhere. And you're still walking through it in your nice clothes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think how, it's how could you do that and, right. and not, feel some kind of way you know i think it's definitely a statement of the had versus the had nots where there's definitely an elite wealthy class of people that walk by and drive by you know in their bentleys down downtown la for example and there's tons of people sitting in sewage and tents on the street this is definitely kind of that contrast of very rich wealthy well-dressed upper class just like you said walking over the bodies of others and it's meaningless to them because hey they're okay Okay, they're rich, they're well to do. So who cares if everyone else is suffering? Yeah, that's real weird. It's another one of um, uh, Santiago uh, Santiago's work. He did one work. Um, you don't have the vigils here, but the work who cannot be paid. Um, it, it was to remain inside cardboard boxes. So he actually made these uh, these cardboard boxes that he, I guess, he put people inside. And um, uh, one a part of his art was to show that hey people are living inside of a box wow. kind of thing and like you won't be able to see like all of the pretty things that I have inside this box unless you you know break it open kind of thing I, I really that like when you're looking at his imagery uh -huh. he's He's going somewhere yeah, else, yeah, you know definitely another level with his art Santiago Sierra. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go see one of his art shows because it's amazing. Anyway, um, one of the main people that were involved in this particular Balenciaga show was Kanye West. He opened the show in a tactical jacket, leather pants, reinforced knees, military garb topped off with a baseball cap, and of course his mouth guard. He didn't go anywhere without his mouth guard. So a ragtag band of people followed him around the edges to say the least. Their faces were beaten up after hours of makeup in the makeup chair. Uh, so it was just makeup, but yeah, it was, they were beaten up. Um, and it required more than a couple of days to take care of everyone and how they looked. Some carried bags made out of stuffed animals that looked like they'd been through a war. So the fact that Kanye West was dressed for war and people were beaten up and some of their clothes and some of their accessories looked like it had been through war is definitely showing their idea of what might be right around the corner. Right. And also, just to piggyback on that, Santiago Sierra most definitely did another show. She He did another show back in 2001. It was um, 133 people paid to have their dyed, their hair dyed blonde. And it's real interesting. And they're all in a room and they're taking, it was during the, it was during the 2001 Santiago Sierra asked a local uh, illegal street vendors to have their hair dyed blonde for 120 to four hundred twenty dollars, which is basically sixty dollars in their local um uh, their local currency. The only condition was to have their patriots' hair was naturally dark. Many of the street vendors were immigrants from countries like Senegal, Bangladesh, China, or southern um you know southern Italy. Sierra's Sierra that was his requirements wow. then. So th th this just gives you some background about C Santiago Sierra. He's been doing this for a long this visual art for a long time. He's not like 
like a new booty or anything to show up on the scene and just be used by Kanye West. I think Kanye West most definitely saw Sierra and 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 and, and was inspired by his work. You know, yeah, he wanted to collaborate with him. I think it's really interesting that Sierra singles out people that are in need, like the sex workers and like immigrants, and pays them to physically alter themselves. I wonder what the psychology is behind that. To chop your hair off and bleach it blonde, to have a thin tattoo um, down your back. You're physically altering someone. It's almost like, how much can I pay you to let me physically intrude on your on your being that's so interesting well it, you, you they're sacrificing themselves for art but the reality of it is that sixty dollars just to blonde your hair and to take a couple of pictures why not you know you're gonna pay for a couple of burgers but check it I, I think the art in itself about the blonde hair dyeing the blonde hair at that time was very revolutionary because it's telling people's process to assimilate yeah. because he just didn't have black people he had aging there everybody right. there that was in Italy that were or in Guatemala that that had to all dye their hair blonde. There's a status quo that goes on in capitalism that you must erase your own personal identity. Hence, when you go to your corporate job, you don't see indigenous natives dressing in their indigenous native garb. Yeah, ha! that's true. That's right. Very so true. he also did a um, Santiago Sierra also did a group of people facing a wall in 2002, and this group of people he just paid them to to face the wall. You know, and and I think these people, some of them are mentally retarded, some of them are just average. But he wanted to get these people facing the wall, and and, and when they faced the wall, he took pictures of them. But it's interesting because if you really think about it, when you look at these people facing the wall, even when you look at these people walking down this work runway in the yellow and the red, you can see that their faces are not uh, counted for. You know, it's like you don't see them as being human. Only thing you see is what they have on kind of thing, oh. you know, and it's kind of like humanity's or capitalism's a quest to not look at people as being right, human, right. but to just look at them. Look at their as, name brand. Look at their name right. brand or, or just look at them. They don't see that, you know, inside the standing body, there's a soul yeah. kind of thing, you know. Right. Absolutely. Um, some information about um about the artist so he's had his own experience of war he fled georgia with his family when he was a young boy of 10 and being gay compounded his struggles and he said he felt like he'd been punched in the face of for being who he is but he had to stand up and continue walking kind of like the crusade of discovering who you are and defending that he called this a very me show so it kind of expressed how he felt on the inside for a long time, feeling that he was left out and ostracized by society. Um, it was very heavy graffiti on the hoodie and ravaged jeans that were just literally ripped apart. Um, there was also evening wear, clingy t-shirts, jersey, or glamorous pleats. Um, it's They survived against the odds. So the whole point is, <laughs> despite the fact that there was war and everything was going to hell, these beautiful clothes survived it, against all odds. Kind of like how he felt. He survived against all odds, despite everything that was against him growing up. Yeah, man. And I wonder who's paying for all of these, like... He must have ran into one of the most wealthiest dudes or ladies that really want to support kind of like revolutionary artists to to speak out. I, I, I love billionaires or trillionaires or gazillionaires or quadrillionaires, quadrillionaires, because the reality of it is you got so much money, man. Why not support people that are creatives to, you know, to get out there in the world and to push revolutionary art? into the people so they most definitely can see it. I know some of the images are jarring to see. You know, it's jarring to see people walk in their finest of clothes, clothes right. that cost like, you know, $20,000 for some jeans right. and a purse that costs a half a million dollars and you're just walking down a muddy road and you're yellow. You know, right. it's jarring <laughs> to see that. Right. But the effect of it is ri the, the conscious, subconscious effect of to your mental mind is so jarring that it totally makes sense that, hey, people, we need to wake up as we're walking down these run runways of life right. and to, you know, most definitely see um, see the world in a different way different space you yeah. know from um from a fashion point of view 
walking through the mud in luxury clothes is literally sacrilege. Mm. When you have on designer threads, one does not walk through the mud. It's literally sacrilegious to do that. So the fact that they did this was kind of um, pointing out the nasty overconsumption of wealthy people. Also, the fact that um, Demna sent out a black dress made out of cut out Balenciaga lariat bags, which are very expensive. One of the dresses was actually made out of cut up lariat Balenciaga bags. This one right here, the one with the chains on it, extremely expensive. It talked about, it spoke to overconsumption about how wealthy people overconsume, waste money on things that don't matter. um, And it's literally just a waste and it's a terrible habit. So it was a lot of very much like middle finger to bourgeois overconsumption by dragging, literally dragging them through the mud. Hey, m- much peace. And this is not to hate on wealthy people, man. Everybody wants to be wealthy one day. But the reality of it is, is that you have to make good decisions with everything that you're doing in your existence. And the more you make those good decisions, your your decisions will affect a million people. And that's a as long as that is a, a heavy as the crown, you know, kind of thing. Um, heavy as the crown that, that wears heavy it. Heavy as the head that wears the crown. Yeah, man. Uh, it, it's just a part of it. But, hey, thank you for listening to the King and Candy Show. We really appreciate you. My name is King. And I'm Candy. And thank you. And this is our uh, Balenciaga uh, breakdown of the summer 23. Peace.